Good evening, everyone. Tonight's video is just a basic math skills review to get us started for the school year. Uh, we're going to watch these videos pretty much every night, so I'm hoping that this is a good learning tool for you and that this is a great way for us to have some time in class to go over uh, what we encounter on the videos the night before. So we're just going to start with some basic math skills to get us uh, back in the class mode and just to try to experience some of the stuff that we're going to get to this year uh, just to refresh our memory. So with uh, what we're going to do here is just doing some adding and subtracting fractions. So if I want to add or subtract fractions, the thing that I need before I can combine these two is to have a common denominator. So when I'm looking at these two denominators here, I have a 4 and a 5. Uh, what I want to do is multiply each of these fractions by something that will give me the same number in the denominator so I can combine the fraction. Because I can't just do 3 fourths plus 1 fifth. So I can, if I want to, like list out all the multiples of 4 and all the multiples of 5 until I find a common one and then figure out how to get the, the common denominator there. Another easy way is just 4 times 5 would give me 20, and I know that those two together would, you know, when you multiply them together, you get the, you get the common denominator. So that's probably what we'll end up doing most of the time. But you could list out all the factors and see if there's anything in common. So 3 fourths times 5 over 5 plus 1 fifth times 4 over 4 is going to be how I'm going to get the common denominator. Because remember, if I'm just going to multiply, the, I can't just multiply the denominator by 5. I have to multiply the numerator by 5 as well, so 5 over 5. So what I have now is 15 twentieths plus 4 twentieths. And you can always go back and check and make sure that this simplifies to give you 1 fifth and this simplifies to give you 3 fourths. So 15 twentieths plus 4 twentieths, that's a total of 19 twentieths. And can't simplify that at all, so that's our final answer there. Over here, I'm trying to subtract these two fractions. I have 7 eighths minus 20 twelfths. And again, here's an example of where I'm not just going to do 8 times 12 to get my common denominator. I could, but it's not the least common denominator, so I'd be simplifying somewhere further down the line. I'm going to think of the multiples of 8 and the multiples of 12 that are the same. So in this case, when I get to 24, um, which I should erase that, I get to 24, that's going to be the common denominator, right? So um, 3 times 8 is 24, so I'm going to have 7 eighths times 3 over 3 minus 20 twelfths times 2 over 2, because 2 times 12 equals 24. So 7 times 3 is 21, so I have 21 20 fourths minus 20 times 2, that's 40 20 fourths. And so now I have 21 minus 40 20 fourths. So I'm going to have a negative number there. So 21 minus 40 is going to be negative 19 20 fourths. And is there any simplifying there? No, right? I just have a negative 19 24. There's no common factors to pull out. So that's my um, final answer there. Moving on, we're going to do some multiplying and dividing fractions. Now, we don't need common denominators here, but there are going to be some uh, rules that we're going to want to go by. Here I have mixed uh, fractions. So mixed numbers. So what I want to do is write this as an improper fraction you might hear sometimes where the numerator is actually larger than the denominator. So I can just take 4 times the, do the denominator times the whole number out in front and then add that to the numerator. So 4 times 1 is 4. 4 plus 3 is 7 fourths times 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7 so that's 7 thirds. And now when I multiply fractions, I can just multiply across. So 7 times 7 is 49. 
and 4 times 3 is 12. And if we want to, we can leave this as 49 twelfths. That's okay. But you can also uh, write it as a mixed fraction like we have here. So 49 divided by 12 is 4. And there would be 1 12th left over, right? Because 49 divided by 12, uh, 48 is going to be 4 times. And then so you can do 12 times 4 is 48 plus 1 is 49, just to check your final answer there. When we are dividing fractions, we are actually multiplying by the reciprocal, remember? So this is really 4 fifths times 25 sixteenths. Now, something that I couldn't do over here, um, but I can do here, is I can um, simplify across. So the 4 really becomes a 1, the 16 really becomes a 4, right? Because that would be like 1 fourth. 4 over 16 would be 1 fourth. Same thing with the 5 and the 25. That's really a 1, and the 25 is really a 5. So now, when I am simplifying, I am really just multiplying across, and I get 1 times 5, which is 5, 1 times 4, which is 4, and if we want to write that, as 1 and 1 fourth, that would be great and simplified. So uh, with the dividing fractions, remember you're really multiplying by the reciprocal. And now we could have multiplied across and then simplified, or when we have it written in this form, that's where you can kind of cross, cross out and simplify and then save yourself some trouble when you do the multiplication. Now we're going to get into a little bit of algebra review, some simple problems, a couple of two-step uh, equations to solve for x. So whenever I'm trying to solve for a variable, I want to isolate it. I want to get it by itself. So that means move everything else over to the other side of the equation. The one thing I always want to be careful of is whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side of the equation. So here, I want to get x by itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is add 4 to each side. And the reason for that is I want to get all the other terms over here until I'm just dealing with the x term, and then I'm going to do whatever I need to do to divide or multiply or whatever to get that x by itself. So first thing I want to do is move the 4 over, and I add 4 because if I'm subtracting 4 here and I add 4, those two things cancel out. So now I have 2x equals 12 plus 4, that is 16. So now I'm, I'm almost there. I have the x term by itself, but I need to get the x by itself. So 2x, to get rid of that 2, I'm going to divide by 2. Right? 2x two over 2, the 2s would cancel. And so now I'm left with x equals 16 divided by 2 is 8. So that one's pretty simple. The next one, we have a fraction. I'm just going to throw a fraction in there, um, but that's no big deal. Same thing, isolate the x. So here I'm going to subtract 2 from each side. And so now I have 3 fourths x equals 11 minus 2, which is 9. Now to get rid of that 3 fourths, uh, what I can do is multiply by the reciprocal. So when I multiply by 4 thirds, the 4 and the 4 cancel each other out. That would be 1 over 1. The 3 and the 3 cancel each other out. And so now you're just left with x over here. And remember what we do to one side, we got to do to both. So I'm going to multiply this side by 4 thirds. You can really think of this as a 9 over 1. And so now again, we could multiply across, then simplify if we want. Or I cannot simplify right here. The 3 becomes a 1, the 9 becomes a 3. So I get 3 times 4, which is 12, over 1 times 1, so 12 over 1. So in this case, x equals 12. That's my final answer. And then our last one here, we're going to have it where there's a variable on both sides, right? So I'm not quite sure. I want to isolate the variable, but there's, there's one on each side. So which side do I pick? I'll usually pick the side that has the bigger... Uh, coefficient in front of x because that's just easier to work with positive numbers. So first thing I want to do is get the um, variable on the same side. I'm trying to isolate it, right? I just try to get it by itself. 
So what I have now is the 2x and the minus 2x, they cancel each other out. So I just have 4 over here equals 7x minus 2x. That leaves me with a total of 5x and then minus 5. So I'm still trying to isolate the variable. So I'm going to add 5 to each side. And I get 9 equals 5x. And I still want to isolate that variable. So I'm going to divide both sides by 5. And my final answer here is 9 fifths equals x. You can leave it like that, or if you really like to write it as x equals 9 fifths, that's fine too. Uh, you could also write that as x equals 1 and 4 fifths. So those are just some quick math skills that we want to review. We're going to work with fractions this year, so remember how to do that. Remember common denominators or multiplying by the reciprocal. So um, these are just some things that we're going to encounter this year, doing some simple algebra. Hope you're looking forward to it, and we'll do some more practice problems like this in class on Monday. And have a great weekend, and I will see you then.